Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my October favorites and disappointments video. I didn't do one for September, so this is kind of rolling two months into one, but this is everything that I have been loving over the past two months and a couple items that just weren't worth it for me. I could probably spend hours filming an intro, so without further ado, let's just jump into what I've been loving. Okay, so I'm just kind of grabbing things at random. I normally do it like, from like hair, skincare, all the way down to lips. And honestly, I've filmed this video way too many times and I find myself keep getting stuck on the same product. So we're just gonna jump into it and grab random products. The first product is a product that I actually did not think I was going to like when I initially got it. It's the Urban Decay Ultimate Naked Basics Palette. When this very first launched, um, I swatched it in store and I hated the consistency of it. I felt like it was really dry. The colors were really patchy. I felt like as a palette, it was kind of useless. It's an all matte palette. So you open it, you get two rows of matte shades and they have a good range of colors, but swatching it on the hands, it was really, really dry and really, really patchy. However, when it applies with a brush on the eyes, it looks absolutely beautiful and is so, so, so pigmented. It is actually more pigmented and more intense than it looks in the pans. Like the colors are a little bit deceiving. Some of these colors, when I went to go put it on my eye, I was expecting to have it look like in the pan, but it's actually a little bit deeper than how it looks in the pan. But this has quickly become one of my favorite kind of in addition to palettes. So this is great, especially around this time of year with holiday palettes or if you're trying to find a gift for a makeup junkie or anything like that because it has all the perfect like transition shades, crease shades, deepening shades. It has some really nice lighter shades for the lids to highlight things like that but they're all completely matte. So to me it's just kind of the perfect in addition to palette. I also absolutely love the size of this mirror and I love the packaging of this. It is so sleek and it's so like just sturdier than all of the like the tins that Urban Decay has done in the past and I think that this is like the perfect mirror to look at yourself while you're doing your makeup so I really have been loving this palette surprisingly. So the next product we're going to talk about another palette I'm just going to quickly mention it because I do have a video going into full detail as far as swatches and my review and thoughts on this palette and I've done a tutorial using it. It's the Lorac Makeup Pro 3 palette. I just want to quickly shout it out because I literally cannot stop using this thing. It is so absolutely pretty. It's what I'm using on my eyes today. It's what I've been using my eyes pretty much every day for the past month. I think it's so, so, so stunning. Lorac really hit it on the head with just the pigmentation and the quality of these. So whether you have all of the Mega Pros, whether you don't have any of the Mega Pros, if you've used Lorac, if you haven't, I highly, highly, highly recommend this palette for everybody. I think the colors are so beautiful, so stunning, and they just look amazing on the skin. Okay, so the next foundation is a higher end foundation. And normally I don't talk about high end foundations that often on this channel. I do through work receive a lot of high end foundations, but there are never any that I'm like, yes, this is so worth like me actually going out and buying this foundation. Like even if I'm like, yeah, I like that foundation, I always think, but would I pay for this with my own money? And half the time the answer is no, I wouldn't. But this is a foundation that I actually really do like and I think once I run out I will repurchase. It's the Lancome Tint Idol Cushion Foundation. So Lancome has their whole Tint Idol um, or Tint Idol, Tint Idol, I think it's pronounced Tint Idol, I could totally be wrong. Um, but it's their foundation line. So they have a liquid, they have a cream and then they now have this cushion foundation. So it's about a medium to full coverage I would say. The other two formulas are a natural matte finish. This one I would say is more natural than matte. It doesn't give a luminous look to the skin, but it's not completely matte either because it is a cushion. Now normally for oily skin, I say stay away from cushion foundations just because I feel like it tends to make the skin look really oily and it's nice. They do give really nice coverage, but I feel like it tends to make my skin look even more oily. I don't have that problem with this one in particular though. I feel like it does give really even, smooth, beautiful coverage, but it doesn't look overly done or made up. So you open it and you do, it's just like any other cushion foundation, you get the cushion right there. Um, I absolutely love the little puff it comes with to apply. Normally I'm always like, I'll use a brush or a beauty blender or something else with a cushion foundation, but this puff is absolutely amazing. I've even used it to apply other types of foundations, to apply concealer, 
powder under eye concealer and I absolutely love the consistency it's almost like I wish they would make a beauty blender in this type of consistency I don't know where it, what it is it's a little bit denser than a beauty blender is but I think it just buffs everything out so beautifully and just makes it look really smooth and airbrushed so I've really been liking this I wear the shade 110 ivory for anyone who's curious so if you're fair like I am that should work for you all right Next face product is a concealer and this is from Too Faced. It is their new Born This Way concealer. I feel like for a hot minute a lot of people were talking about this concealer. Then Tarte came out with their Shape Tape concealer and everybody forgot about this. I've never tried the Tarte Shape Tape but I almost feel like I don't want to just because I find this concealer to be so amazing. I have not used any other concealer for the past two months. This concealer has totally changed my world if a concealer can do that I use this under my eyes and it just gives the most fresh radiant like a live look under the eyes while still giving really really full coverage the first time I applied this I was actually surprised how much coverage it gave but it still feels so light under the eyes the one thing I don't like about this is the shade range. I wear the shade Very Fair, which is literally the color of my skin, so I can't highlight with it. I've actually kind of just quit highlighting in general um, because of it, but I know if anyone wants to highlight with this or if anyone is fairer than I am because I am not the lightest shade in everything. I know for a fact my sister is fairer than I am and we have kind of the same undertone but she is lighter than I am. And there are other people who are fairer than me than this concealer wouldn't work just because it doesn't come in a light enough shade. All right, so the next product I have is from Kat Von D and this is her Locket Setting Powder yeah, her Locket setting powder. That's that's it. That's what it's called. So it's just a translucent setting powder. And this, dare I say it, is my favorite translucent setting powder I have ever found. And I've tried a lot of setting powders. I've never tried the RCMA No Color setting powder that everybody and their mother raves about. I absolutely love this setting powder. And not just on myself, but on everybody. I love it for so many different skin tones, for so many different skin types, so for so many different age ranges. I use this, I get my mom to use this, I use this on just about every client, and it looks so, so pretty on the skin. This, the consistency of this is so microfine, it's lighter than most translucent powders, so you don't get that heavy, cakey, powdery look on the skin. It just melts into the skin really easily. If you're someone who enjoys baking or doing like heavy duty translucent setting, I'm not a fan of that technique, but if you are, but you find most powders leave you looking dry and really heavy, I would say go for this one just because it is so finely milled. You can do it and get the same effect without it being as heavy or as drying on the face. Okay, so final face product is a new one from Makeup Forever. Makeup Forever came out last year with highlight bronzer duos, and there was a pink one with a bronzer and a gold one with a bronzer. And I feel like everybody loved the highlights, but nobody liked the bronzers that it came with. So they recently kind of revamped and relaunched those highlights minus the bronzer. They have a pink one and a gold one. I have the pink one. It's the shade number one, and this is so unbelievably stunning as a highlight. It just looks so gorgeous on the skin. I have it right there. So this is a very light kind of pearly pink. It looks so, so pretty on fairer skin tones. And then they have a gold one, which looks really pretty on medium to deep skin tones. It's not chunky. It's not glittery. It just gives you that really nice like shimmer sheen to the skin. Okay, so I feel like every favorites video, I'm always talking about some new mascara. Like I'm constantly in the pursuit for the perfect mascara. And I don't even know why I've gotten so hung up on finding like the best mascara ever. I feel like most people are kind of like, mascara is mascara. And especially if you wear false lashes, they're like, whatever mascara you have is fine. But I'm always like, no, I need to find the best mascara. Without wearing false lashes, I have really short upper lashes. And I've always been very self-conscious about them. And I actually probably never even thought about it until when I very first started wearing makeup. I wore winged eyeliner a lot. And I had a coworker when I worked at Penny's say one to me one time, do you not ever wear mascara? 
And I was like, I do. And she's like, oh, I guess your lashes are so short when you wear eyeliner, you can't even see them. And ever since then, I've been so self-conscious about my lashes. So I like never wear eyeliner without wearing false lashes because I'm like, nobody can see my eyelashes. And I think I finally found it, guys. I think I finally found the mascara that is the best mascara for my lashes. It is the new It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. Um, I heard Katie Lester Lux when this very first launch talked about it. She mentioned it briefly and just said she had been liking it a lot. And anytime I hear about a new mascara anybody's liking, I'm like, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. So when they came out with this mascara, I got it. And I am so in love with this mascara. Because of this mascara, I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not filming or not at work, I don't need to wear false lashes because I feel like my lashes look so long and full. I'm never really crazy about trying to find volume for my lashes. At this point, they're so short that I'm like, if I can just get lengths to them, I'm fine if they look a little separated and spidery, like I don't mind. But these make my lashes look so long but full at the same time. It has an elastic stretch technology in it where it literally takes the lash and stretches it out, which is what gives it length and curl to the lash. It's almost to me if the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara and the Too Faced Better Than Sex one had a baby. Like it gives you that volume and the brush itself is close enough where it's giving you that volume, but it still gives you that same lift and curl effect that the Roller Lash one does. Um, so I absolutely love this. This is great also for lower lashes because it is so thin and dense. You can really go to town and make your lower lashes look amazing, which is what I like to do. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I sell this to anyone I can. My mom uses it and she has shorter upper lashes than I do and she loves this. So this stuff is amazing. So moving into some lip products. So first thing is a brand which I'm actually surprised I have not talked about on my channel at this point because I am obsessed with this brand and it is Kylie Cosmetics and I'm talking about the matte lip kits. I have not tried any other products from Kylie other than her matte lip kits. So I haven't tried the glosses, the metals, any eyeshadow, eyeliners, anything like that. I recently ordered some of the glosses and the metal shades and that's actually the order I'm waiting on. So my goal is to do a video kind of comparing all of her lip products but I absolutely love her matte lip kits. I've never had a liquid lipstick last as long as these do, feel as comfortable as these do and not crumble or look patchy um or you know just look just look weird um i just have two colors just to kind of show you guys just the colors i have been loving recently so the first one is pumpkin it is literally it is like the color of my hair i think it looks so so pretty it's that perfect like rusty orange type of color and then the next one i have is leo which was actually part of her birthday collection but I think it is the perfect vampy burgundy deep just beautiful fall shade like to me this is like the type of color I just live breathe and die for during the fall because I just think it looks so pretty on so many different skin tones so the next lip product I have to talk about is an expensive one I remember when these first launched Kathleen lights talked about them all of the time and I recently got the opportunity to actually try them and now I'm like I'm addicted to $32 lipsticks and I'm not sorry. And so I'm talking about the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. So the color I wanna talk about is Raquel. It's the color I'm wearing right now. I have a gloss underneath it, but this color is just everything I want in a nude. Like it is the perfect nudie pink for my skin tone. I'm obviously very fair, but I also don't have a lot of pigment to my lips. Like if I wear just makeup but no lip products, which is what I did for the longest time, and I don't know why, I have such pale pink lips that I literally, I look like I'm snorting cocaine or something. Like it just looks so dead. And this is literally, it's this shade right here, like the perfect pinky nude. It deepens my lips up enough where I don't look like dead girl nude, but it's still like an actual nude shade and it has just the right amount of pink, but enough nude to it that it's not like a pink pink. 
I'm wearing it underneath Anastasia Undressed Lip Gloss, which is like my favorite lip gloss of all time. I actually watched um, Jaclyn Hill talked about this in her October favorites. It's this shade right here. And I was like, soul sisters. Like this is my all time favorite lip gloss, especially for the fall. I don't wear glosses that often, but I do for whatever reason, like it with certain fall looks, probably because I do more smokier eyes in the fall. Um, but I love this gloss on top of it. It just, it makes it like the perfect like butterscotch, like nude perfection. I love it. Okay, so final two favorites are hair products. So the first one is from Living Proof and it is their full dry volume blast. I was so super skeptical when this product launched and I love Living Proof. Like I live, breathe, like if I could throw all my money at Living Proof, I totally would. But when I heard about this product, I was like, like really, is it gonna make my hair like have that much more volume two days later? I will say this, I don't feel like it gives my hair that much volume two days later, but throughout the day, like the day of spraying it, I definitely noticed a difference in the volume of my hair. I have really, really, really thick, heavy hair, like so, so, so thick hair, but I still have the problem where it will be super full all out here, but the roots of my hair will totally lie flat. And that's definitely has that kind of problem has increased after dyeing my hair, like just the roots of my hair just want to like lie completely flat and be drab. So I take this, I'm completely out or I demo it, but I take this and I spray it in sections of my hair and it gives it so much more lift and body up here. I kind of feel like because I ran out today, like I was trying to do it and nothing was coming out. I was like, oh my gosh, but I need you. So I feel like my hair looks like flatter than normal because of that. I will say that I don't notice the next day like having so much more volume, but I do notice at the end of the day, my hair still retains the volume as it did in the morning when I did this. I actually sprayed this in my hair before I went to a wedding recently and I was dancing and drinking and having a good time and partying and at the end of the night people were like oh my gosh like how does your hair still look so full and amazing and it doesn't look like a wet noodle like the rest of ours do. It's like because of this bad boy. I know Casey Holmes talked about it and said it was a favorite. I'm definitely going to be purchasing the big size because I think it's awesome. Okay, so the last favorite I have to talk about is a shampoo, and this is from Dry Bar, and this is their Happy Hour Blowout Shampoo. I recently got to be a part of a masterclass that Dry Bar did. Um, they had some of their top stylists in the country came out um, to my Sephora location and um, taught all of us there kind of different tips and tricks, how to use their hot tools. They demoed their hot tools, talked about all their different products, um, kind of how to help sell them to clients or help, you know, give educate clients um, about the products. Um, so I got to work with one of the guys there. He was name was Falcon. He is based at the one of the Chicago locations um, of Dry Bar. One of the nicest, like most like caring people I've ever met in this industry. He was so totally awesome. Um, but we were, you know, in the process of, you know, trying to blow dry my hair. Um, and we were kind of talking about, you know, my hair. Um, obviously my hair color has changed, but with that I did not realize how much my hair itself was going to change. The texture, how it dries, products that used to work for it that no longer work for it, like all of that has changed so much. But um, I was telling him about a problem and it was something he said he could feel was um, that I was getting this like kind of film on my hair after washing it. And he asked me what shampoos I use. So I was telling him about a red depositing shampoo I was using. I only wash my hair once a week anyways, just to help, you know, maintain the color. So I'm not complete having to dye my hair like every three weeks. But it was leaving this really gross grease film on my hair. So he suggested that I try this. He said it would be safe for my color treated hair, that it wouldn't strip the color, but it would help get rid of the buildup in my hair so that my hair still felt clean and I could style it. So I bought it, it's expensive. It's a $24 shampoo and I was like, this better freaking change my life. And it did, like I so wasn't disappointed. I went home, used it that night and I didn't even have any product in my hair because I had showered that morning for the event. And my hair felt so clean and so like 
lifted afterwards. Like I had been walking around, like my hair had just felt heavy before, like heavy and like weighed down with product and with dye and the shampoo and everything else. And it totally felt so light and clean. And it also felt so soft. And I hadn't experienced that since I had dyed my hair. So I think this is so, so worth it. It does not strip my color at all. Okay, so that was everything that I have been loving recently. So now let's jump into some things I haven't been loving. So these are all actually from the same brand. And I am kind of justifying this because I had two favorites from this brand as well. But um, this is no shade and no hate to this brand. Um, it's a brand that I got to try for this first time. If uh, it's it Cosmetics, let me just say that right now. Um, but there are just some products that they launched that just didn't work out for me. To me, a disappointing product is one that I either A, spent my money on, or B, spent time and effort and tried using it over and over again, and it just, at the end of the day, didn't do anything for me, or just didn't work for me, or did something bad for me. That's disappointing to me. Um, so two of the products are skincare. So the first one is their Confidence in a Cream. This is a moisturizer. I literally feel like it made no difference to my skin. And I've literally, I have used probably two thirds of it at this point over the past two months. It's the only moisturizer I use. And I just, like my skin doesn't feel like amazing like it has with my other moisturizers. Like it just feels like, meh. Maybe for someone with a drier skin type, this would really work. But for me having really oily skin, not that it did anything bad to my skin, but it just, my skin didn't feel like, like as great as it has in the past with other moisturizers. So to me, that's just a total skip if you're oily, like it just, it didn't do anything. My second thing is their Bye Bye Makeup. This is their cleansing balm. Again, if you have dry skin, this would probably be amazing for you. I do know some of my coworkers with drier skin types absolutely love this. Again, for me being oily, cleansing balms are not my favorite to begin with because they tend to leave kind of a greasy film on the skin anyways. But these to me just are totally just, it's not even worth it. Like I just feel like it, while it does remove makeup, I just, I don't ever reach for it because I hate the way my skin feels afterwards. With any cleansing, I always double cleanse. I'll use something to remove the makeup and then use an actual cleanser to wash my face with. But even despite that, I just, I don't ever reach for this. I just feel like it's gross on my skin. I just, I don't like it. I don't think it's worth it. Sorry, it cosmetics. The final one is their Bye Bye Pores Translucent Loose Powder. I so wanted to like this because this was actually a little expensive. I want to say this was like... 37 bucks. I could totally be wrong. It could could have been cheaper than that. I want to say it was somewhere in the 30 price range and it just is so hard to work with. When you go to put it onto the face, it leaves this like dusty white powder. The powder just like sits on top of your face like it doesn't get absorbed. I tried it with so many different tools with using a loose fluffy brush, a dense fluffy brush, a sponge, a powder puff, and nothing seems to make it absorb into the skin. It just sits on top of the skin unless I really start like pushing and packing the product in. To me, that is so much more work. I love the Kat Von D one. I think it's a million times better and is like way more effective. So for me, this was a hard no. I wanted to like you but you're difficult, so I couldn't like you. I just... That was it. That was everything that I have been loving, my favorites and disappointments. Let me know in the comments below what you've been loving or not loving over the past couple of months. I'm so excited for November. November and December are my favorite times of the year. Like, like this is my time. Like, this is my time to shine. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you in my next video.